Hi, this is Eduardo Lopez with D-Sharp. Thanks for coming back. The fact that you're here tells me that you're either building something or you're continuing to build something. I happen to be CFO, but what I want to share applies to all areas. This is the first in a series of videos that are devoted to mindset. And there's three elements to that. Identifying your what and your why. What does success mean to you? The second one is gonna be defining and creating a growth mindset. And the third one is gonna be your story, what you tell yourself. Let's think about the what. What does success mean for you? How far, fast, or high do you wanna go? Do you wanna become CEO, CFO, CIO, CHRO? What do you wanna do? There's no right answer, all of them are good. Do you wanna become a consultant, spiritual guide, Sherpa, digital nomad, orchestra conductor, it's all fine. You just need to know what you want to do. And remember, all of these things carry trade-offs. For example, if you choose the more corporate route, you might have more impact on your company. You might make more money. You might have a more interesting business card, maybe. On the other hand, if you choose the more freedom-driven track, you're going to find that you're probably going to have better control of your time, better ability to be with people you want to be with in exchange for probably less money, less impact, maybe a simpler business card. And guess what? Both of them are okay. There's no better answer here. Both are good. Let me give you two examples from real life. One is historical, one is an actual client that I'm working with. On the historical one, when I used to work for Procter & Gamble, I had the fortune of meeting one of the most driven individuals that I've come across. This young man from a very young age knew that he wanted to become a CFO. And he also knew why he wanted that. He wanted to be at the table for the big consequential decisions. He wanted to make a lot more money. He wanted to have a name that was more associated with the direction the company was taken, etc. And guess what? He never changed. He kept constant and loyal to those principles, those, uh, those what and why, right? And he zoomed up. And right now he's the CFO of a publicly traded consumer goods company that's one of the biggest. The other one is a client that I'm working with. She's a very successful ex-management consultant who then moved on to financial services. She was doing really well there, but at some point she really started to feel like something was missing. That's the way we started interacting and that been helping her define that why and define the strategy of how to move from one more corporate driven track to a more mission driven track. And she's doing great. What she wants to do is she has decided to leave her corporate role and go back to her home country where she will be working with underserved communities. And this is what really fills her up. And I'm very happy for her. Both of them are extremely, extremely satisfied. You can see that they're all happy with the decisions that they made. One is living his dream. He's a big time CFO with a big voice, visible, super happy, delving in numbers, delving in business strategy, so he's doing great. The other one identified her dream, created a plan to go for it, and is now pursuing it. And she's as happy as she's ever been, or probably more, she's very fulfilled. So these are just two examples to show that you're gonna have a core motivation and that'll give you the force to persevere. You're gonna eventually, invariably run into storms, you're gonna trip, you're gonna scrape your knees, you're gonna fail these obstacles. And knowing your why is going to allow you to power through. Quoting one of those uh, Rocky movies that I really like, I, I found something that really is meaningful to me. It doesn't matter how hard you hit. It's how hard you get hit and still move forward. That really talks, right? Persevere. If you know your why, you're going to go through any obstacles that life throws your way. Additionally, if you have a very clear why, it's going to make it a lot easier for you as a leader to attract people who have the same uh, core belief system. So your same values, your same interests. That's going to allow for a sharpness of focus on a single purpose that will allow them to get way farther than they ever thought. Think about the teams that developed the COVID-19 vaccines in one year versus a regular timeline of more than five. Driven by purpose driven by why. 
and all shared by the team. The final one is the hallmark of the aspirational leader, which is to lead the charge up a hill. Doing that will allow you to have your team go with you and significantly impact, change, and disrupt your business. Whatever you choose to do, own it. It's on you. You have to identify what you want to do and why you want to do it. And I'm going to give you some homework. I want you to take a sheet of paper and put four bullet points on it. The first two you're going to use to define your what. What is it you want to do? No more than two bullets, two or three sentences to really describe what you want to achieve. Bullets three and four, I want you to use to define your why. Why do you want to pursue that? Why is that meaningful? How is that going to satisfy you? The why is as important as the what, if not more. I hope that this video has given you useful information and food for thought. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Be smarter, be better, be sharp. I'll see you here for the next one. Bye.